Good morning. It's Tuesday, it's 11 a.m., and it is time for the FIU Music Hour on WDNA 88.9 FM. Good morning, everyone. It is so good to be back here in our home at the WDNA Jazz Gallery. Although we can't share with you live in the gallery just yet, we are certainly trying to bring you the best of FIU to your homes, your studios, and the community. This program features weekly live performances in the WDNA Jazz Gallery featuring students, faculty, and alumni from Florida International University School of Music. I'm Colin Miller, your host for today's program. Make sure you like our FIU Music Hour Facebook page to stay up to date with all of our upcoming radio programs. This morning we are joined by Combo One under the direction of Professor Gary Campbell, featuring Sergio Zavala on guitar, Charlemagne Sands on bass, and Carlos Rodriguez on drums. All right, guys, take it away with your first piece, a Thelonious Monk tune. Enjoy Jackie Ying. Take it away. Thank you. 
And what a great way to get this morning started, uh, and that was jackying with uh, a great Thelonious Monk tune. So up next is another song by Thelonious Monk. Please enjoy work. You're listening to WDNA uh, here on the FIU Music Hour, 88.9 FM. Take it away, guys.
And that was Work, another Thelonious Monk tune. Uh, so, moving right along, this next one is by Billy Strayhorn, and it is Chelsea Bridge. Uh, take it away, guys. You're listening to the FIU Music Hour here on WDNA 88.9 FM. Thank you. 
And that was Chelsea Bridge by Billy Strayhorn, as done by Combo One under the direction of Professor Gary Campbell. Uh, we're we're going to be taking a short break now, but when we come back, we will be interviewing uh, Gary Campbell himself. So don't go away. You're listening to the FIU Music Hour here on WDNA, and we'll be right back after these messages. We are back here at the FIU Music Hour, where we have uh, Combo One under the direction of Professor Gary Campbell. And, uh, and Gary Campbell is actually here in the Jazz Gallery with us. Uh, Professor Campbell, how are you? Just fine. How are you, Colin? Pretty good. It's uh, great to have your wonderful combo here on the show. And my first question for you, actually, is... Uh, What's it like teaching the group remotely? Has there been any challenges, maybe any benefits? It's a big challenge. And I mean, results like what you're hearing now are the benefits. Mm. That's the benefits. The making of it is, you know, we're inventing it kind of. I mean, there's a system to it, of course, but it, it's new to everyone. And, uh, you know, the whole thing of, especially music, which is a social phenomenon, you know, it involves people who are making the music and then people who are hearing the music. It's like the old thing about the tree in the forest. Mm -hmm. The tree falls in the forest, but if nobody's there, does it make any sound? I mean, it's kind of like that. So as makers of the music, we are just part of the picture. And so we have to kind of imagine the people, the listener, you know, and the other who are participants in the whole event. So that's a big thing. And also not being able to rehearse in person at this point uh, is a big challenge because, uh, m you know, working, playing a jazz ensemble or any music ensemble is a moment-to-moment -moment situation and uh, in real time and as we proceed through a piece or something, you know, quite often we have to stop and say, wait a minute, what are you doing? You know, what's mm -hmm. that? Or don't do that. Or yes, that's good, do that. You know, it, 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 you teach as you go. Mm -hmm. And uh, operating on the reality of what the sounds are being made and all that kind of thing. And th that's a big handicap when we don't have that at our disposal, you know, to be able to meet with the guys in the same room, at this point anyway, and uh, hear the subtleties of what they're doing on the instrument, mm -hmm. the balance, you know, the subtle things. I mean, now you can record and all that, but that's not, music is not performed, you know, that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is, uh, there are a lot of things you can work on, like the compositions, Sergio, has been very productive writing and collecting repertoire, mm -hmm. and the other guys have been fantastic learning the repertoire. I might also mention that there, in this group is also a wonderful saxophonist, Brian Ardilla, 
who is not here, obviously, because of the restrictions, COVID restrictions about wind instrument singers and all that. But uh, it's a challenge because, like I say, it's a it's a social phenomenon, and also uh, rehearsing is just something very new to us. Mm-hmm. However, the whole thing of being able to deal with uh, putting together of tracks and all this, this has become part of the music world actually for a long time. Mm-hmm. And so it is, there are valuable things about this, and it pretty much puts the musicians in a position of having to deal with technology and uh, try to work with it in a musical way. And uh, that's very useful as well. It's part of it now. It's not through the music. I don't think it's the most important aspect of it, but really it's there. And uh, being obliged to engage in it you know, to this degree now is a challenge. And it's a learning experience for me, you know, especially more so than them. You know, <laughs> they know more about that part of the stuff than I do. Mm-hmm. You know, so um, it's, and that could uh, be one of the challenges itself too, is just sort of figuring out how to move on in this new normal. I guess. Oh yeah, I mean, look, music and art. Uh, well, because we're talking about music, has been produced throughout the history of since the beginning of the existence through hardship. I mean, uh, in more recent history, uh, during the Second World War, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, there were great artists and there were great music being produced, believe it or not, in concentration camps, Mm. you know, during the Holocaust. Composers were working and a lot of musicians escaped being murdered by being able to play Mm -hmm. a a musical instrument and they had little orchestras or chamber groups. There's a piece, I think it's... I forget, I think it was Janis Zanakis, perhaps, who wrote the quartet for the end of time Mm -hmm. in the concentration camp. And he wrote it for clarinet and I forget, like, three other instruments because that was the instrumentation that was there among the prisoners. Mm -hmm. And they had their little group, and so he wrote for that, and it's a, you know, basic part of the repertoire now, of chamber music repertoire. So musicians have always, through situations that were much more harsh than what we're experiencing now. Mm-hmm. This is, is very harsh and uh, for us, but it's not necessarily, it doesn't have to be deadly. Which actually uh, brings me to my next question, yeah. which is, uh, you know, you are uh, part of the FIU music faculty and you're a big part of why the uh, jazz program there is what it is today. Well, and uh, my question for you actually is, especially with the pandemic going on right now, it's making things a lot more difficult for musicians. Uh, that being a lot of live venues aren't allowing them to play and sometimes maybe finding uh, different gigs to play can be quite difficult. So what would you say your best advice would be for musicians maybe struggling a little bit during the pandemic? Well, I'm sure every musician is struggling in one way or another even the guys of my generation who are already professionals and who have a career and all this Mm -hmm. they're struggling just like the young people are Mm -hmm. but in different ways a little different thing Uh, and it's easy to say well you've got all this time now you can practice and compose and all this but it doesn't always work as easily as that might seem oh like you're a human being so you know under these kind of conditions where there's a lacking of the normal social contact and all of this and uh, just the fear or the cast over society during these times and uh, weird politics, a number of things that are make it difficult to function. So you, in a way, it's probably good to strengthen musicians as individuals to be able to persevere difficult circumstances mm-hmm. and not completely dissolve you know artistically and uh, that's a challenge and it can also make you more uh, inventive perhaps Mm -hmm. you know and it's a test of your 
fortitude and your determination to actually create music. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't be lazy now because there's nothing to hold you up. You got it. Right. And uh, this ultimately should be looked at as a, as a challenge, as a positive thing. You, get, you mentioned the venues around town. That's rough because going out and playing for people is one of the primary reasons that musicians... My mask is slipping. That's right. Uh, you know, that's one of the main reasons we get into it in the first place. And it's that spontaneity of that live atmosphere, I think, that sort sure, of... Sure, and it's fun and communicate. To the test. All the little subtlety of the various reality in a venue where you're working, mm -hmm. the people, what kind of people are you playing for, what's the audience. I mean, in the whole communication, are they ignoring you? I mean, mm -hmm. there's... Are they paying great attention? I mean, this is... is a very critical, and I know I enjoyed it. I spend... I live three months a year in, in Germany... Hamburg primarily, and there at that time, Germany was still doing very well, and I got to do some live gigs that were very controlled, the environment, but like a concert, for instance, I did in Frankfurt with this great saxophonist, Tony mm -hmm. Lakatos, and we played in a venue that was, there were 130 people in the audience. It was a very large venue that had been made out of an old factory. And boy, it was, I'll tell you, it was great to play in a, in a venue like that with an appreciative audience. They're not just people stumbling in off the street because they want to have a drink. It was an mm -hmm. audience right. of people who were there to hear the music and a pretty well-educated audience as regarding knowing jazz idiom and all this. Mm -hmm. as, and the, the people who produced it we're very on top of it. It was an excellent piano. Mm -hmm. We didn't have to use any amplification, which is perfect, you know, for acoustic instruments. So that was kind of a refresher of, oh, yes, now, you know, not having played a live gig for several months, mm -hmm. it was kind of, oh, yeah, this now we see, now here it is right. again, you know. It's like, you know, gives you a little more, a boost to your spirit about playing music. Well, um, going back to your group here, you know, I mean, you should be very proud of what they've been doing. I mean, they, uh, it's been a wonderful first half of the hour, and I can't wait to hear the second half. Me neither. And also, I might just say that WDNA should be applauded, uh, you know, more than applauded, supported for their real diligence about maintaining these performances and the lives of the musicians because this is our life, you know, this is what of we course. do. I can't agree and, more. Uh, and, you know, it makes you be able to live the life of who you are, mm -hmm. you know, and we need that. So uh, WDNA, thank for, thankful to you about this series and about everything that's going on here, you know, that DNA is doing. It's one of the biggest friends, has been for years, but especially now. You know, they're putting their money where their mouth is, <laughs> and uh, that's important. I, I can't agree more. I mean, it's Talk is truly, cheap, but DNA's coming across, you know? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think uh, it's truly a, a service that, that WDNA is bringing to the community, is bringing live music to a certain capacity back, and, you know, and this actually might actually segue to the next piece we're going to be hearing, which is an original by Sergio, and it's Stone Palace. So, uh, uh, Professor Campbell, thank you so yes. much, and uh, I can't wait to hear what the rest uh, what the rest of the hour is like for the group. Me All too. Right. This is the one of the first times I've heard them live. <laughs> you know, I have to come here to, to hear, and that's so crazy, it's going to be but... an experience for both of us. <laughs> yes, for sure. All right, gentlemen, take it away with Sergio Zavala's Stone Palace.
And that was Stone Palace, a Sergio Zavala original. So up next is actually another original by Sergio. Please enjoy Cellmates. You're listening to the FIU Music Hour here on WDNA 88.9 FM. Take it away, guys. Thank you. 
You've been listening to the FIU Music Hour on WDNA 88.9 and Combo One led under the direction of Gary Campbell. Although we are still, still social distancing, you can always hear us on the FIU Music Hour. We love to share our talents and faculty with musicians in our community. So make sure to call 305-348-2896. That's 305-348-2896 if you'd like more information on all of our music programs. And do not forget to like our FIU Music Hour page on Facebook to stay up to date with all of our upcoming musical performances. Next week on the FIU Music Hour, we will be joined by Russ Spiegel with Jim Gassior and our very own Rodolfo Zuniga. I'm your host, Colin Miller, and along with our producers, Karen fuller Veloz and Rodolfo Zuniga, we'd like to remind you to tune in next week at 11 on the radio or live streaming. Thanks for listening and see you next week. And now, uh, without any further ado, gentlemen, the airwaves are all yours with Blue Silver. Thank <laughs> you.